So there are several people running for president of the United States of America. This we had a co- one on last week, Kamala mm-hmm. Harris. We had on mm-hmm. Julian Castro yesterday. Not enough time, in my opinion, with either one of them. Yeah. And this weekend, also, there was a summit or some sort of conference held in Canada's uh, Justice Forum at Benedict College. Mm-hmm. And one of the candidates was asked what I thought was a simple question. Yeah. Yeah. I asked the same question to Julian Castro. Nailed it. Mm-hmm. This shows you he's been thinking about these issues. Or lived it. Yeah. If you're running for president of these United States and you can't answer a simple question about how people should interact with law enforcement in this climate, yeah. people of color, yeah. black people, mm-hmm. and you get that wrong. But it's what I talked about during 2016. There's a tone deafness. Yes. And there's a sense of entitlement and privilege because you might have marched with Mount Martin Luther King. Mm-hmm. That was 50 years ago. Mm-hmm. Today, we have needs that aren't being serviced. Right. And anybody that's going to sit in that Oval Office, if you're going to be anti what's there now, you have to be understanding. I'm not asking you to be black. Right. I'm asking to, to either say I don't know, but I'm right. gonna surround my people myself with people who know, right? And I'm gonna study the issue because I've surrounded myself with people who know, so they should be informing me about the types of questions I'm gonna be asked, particularly when I'm going to a, a school that might cater to a particular population I might not be familiar with. So I'm going to do the work ahead of time to make sure that I'm culturally competent enough to respond to these types of questions, which are basic questions. So let's play. Yeah. This for people who I don't know, maybe you've been, you know, on vacation, mm-hmm. maybe you have, you know, taking a break from social media and mm-hmm. all things and you just wait for the Karen on the show to get some stuff. Could be. Uh, but we're going to play this this clip. Uh, this is, again, Benedict College. There was a presidential justice forum and a student got up, even though. Uh, never mind. I won't get into the grammar. And everything. But go ahead. Play. My name is Jamel Lawton. I'm from Bamber, South Carolina. I'm a sports management major. My question is to you, if I was your son. What advice would you give me the next time I pull over by a police officer? What? what uh, be, hold that mic a little bit closer. I'm sorry. Uh, what? If I if if I'm your son, what advice would you give me the next time I be pulled over by a police officer? That was cracking me up. Next time you wait, pause for a second. Pulled over by a police wait, officer. pause, pause for a second. <laughs> for those of you who are struggling with the if I be, mm. uh, the conjugation of the verb to be. Mm-hmm. That's a very African way to do it. Yes, it is linguistically correct according to our speech patterns. That's all I'm saying. Thank you. So y'all, as Sophia Chang mm-hmm. would say, suck a dick. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah. Mm. Next time you pulled over. pulled over by a police officer. Pause. I would Wait, pause one second. Pause to... again. Pause. I took a full had inhale and exhale. And that had he silence. never heard? <laughs> Did he never anticipate? You got Nina Turner. You got Sean King. You got Killer Mike. You got AOC. You you got Rashida Tlaib. You got Talib. the squad. You got uh, Illinois most Omar. of the squad. You got you got black people coming out your hairy ears. <laughs> I did it. That was five plus seconds. How in the mm-hmm. hell are you shocked or stunned or dumbfounded? Because that was a dumbfounded pause. Like I never considered that. Was he was he shocked at the? I can't imagine having a black son. Was that it? Mm. I can't imagine you being my son. So mm. I'm struggling right now. If my son's pulled over, with my have I ever experienced my son being pulled over? Huh? Never. This is the first time Dove has done a whole campaign <laughs> on the talk. I, I saw it, commercials. I saw it. I saw it. This this was troublesome to me yeah. because yeah. it showed a sense of I'm so out of touch that I don't even know what the hell. So then it gets worse. Go ahead, play it. I would do my best to identify who that police officer is in a polite way, ask him or her for their name. Stop, stop. Mm. I've mm. been taught mm. asking a police officer their name is an act of aggression Yeah. that would probably put you in a position to have a negative outcome mm-hmm. because you're stating right there that I'm, I'm going to get you in trouble. Yeah. You're you're creating an environment. So again, it's already tense and terse. When the lights come on, you got to pull over. Ten and two, you got your hands on the wheel. 
excuse me, officer, can I get your name, your mm-hmm. badge number? Mm-hmm. You're immediately creating a, a, a level of acrimony. There's some tension the, there that yeah. you're tapping into. And as I was told when I was a constitutional law student at New York University School of Law under the beautiful leadership of Derek Bell, may he rest in peace, there is a constitution and there are sets of laws. Those laws do not apply to black people on the street. They apply to this law class discussion that we're having right now. They even apply to white people who might brandish a gun, might aim and shoot at an officer and still be taken down with calm words from a negotiator. Those rules and those laws do not apply to us. We know this from lived experience, from the research, from the data, from citations. I could cite you book, chapter, and verse of the literature that would speak to the validity of this issue. So the first thing out of Bernie Sanders' mouth puts the person in the car in direct opposition to the officer. And that advice is good for a Bernie Sanders white son. That might actually be appropriate. Hello, officer. Yes, I'm happy to give you my information. However, sir, what is your name? I've come, sorry, I can't quite see your badge number there. Could you just to the side? Oh, okay, thank you so much. Here's my information. That conversation, I can envision that happening with between white people, a white uh, citizen or a white resident, a white officer, even a white resident and a black officer. I can imagine that happening. Easy. Yeah. All right, continue. Mm-hmm. I would respect what they are doing so that you don't get shot in the back of the head. Stop. Mm. Okay. <laughs> okay. I, I've been pulled over. You've been pulled over? I over? have. Okay. Mm-hmm. How is the back of my head in a position to get shot, number one? Because mm-hmm. the, the logistics of that, clearly, even if you're, you're, you're pulling over, you're turning your face to the officer. Philando could still didn't get shot in the back of the head. But I'm going to be respectful in order to not be shot in the back of the head as if there is a relationship between my level of respect and my ability to get shot. Like he made that a con- connection. Which implies that people who have been shot by police in some way triggered that because of their lack of respect. So an inability to adequately and and fully engage in a respectful dialogue with police is at the heart of his analysis as to what might contribute to you being shot the next time. So after that response, I was done. Yeah. Because I said, not only is he out here talking reckless, Mm -hmm. but now he doesn't really have a grasp of why people are being shot. Right. Which Which, there's no rhyme or reason. And but that also means that the solutions that he would advocate and that he would listen to and entertain are not going to be solutions that are going to address the root of the problem because he doesn't understand understand the problem. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead, Mm Smith. But I would also be very mindful of the fact that as a nation, we have got to hold police officers accountable for the actions that they commit. And that is, so to answer your question, I would be very cautious, if you were my son, in terms of dealing with that police officer, but I also defend my rights and know my rights and make sure, if possible, that police officer's camera is on what goes on. Okay. First of all, y'all may have trouble with the mm. if, if I be. Mm. I got a tr- <laughs> I got problems with <laughs> on if they on or what the hell? What was that first of all? So the idea that you the person who's being stopped by the police has the ability oh. is responsible for in determining whether or not the police camera is on and off or that you have the ability to even know whether or not the officer actually has the camera whether the officer has turned it on for this portion of the of the engager engagement and has turned it off for the latter. That is not something that is within the purview of your control. And one of the reasons that this really troubled me is is last week I testified in front of the New York State Senate Committee on Codes as it pertains to this particular Slow down, law. Larry. So you, where this, did you testify? Sorry. Okay, I had to testify in front of the New York State Senate Committee on Codes, right? There's this law that we have in New York, which is actually replicated in a number of states, although New York has the most egregious version of it, that basically says when a police officer does something like, I don't know, kills you on camera, like Daniel Pantaleo did with Eric Garner, that you don't get information about their name. You don't get to find out if they had previous uh, allegations of abuse. If this is their fourth, fifth, twelfth time causing this type of harm to someone, they are protected by these very, very, very very 
police friendly laws that are designed to keep their quote personnel records under wraps right so we're testifying about this and my testimony is essentially the police descended from the slave patrols the slave patrols had a hood that they were able to hide behind the police have this law that they're able to hide behind so anything that they do to black children to black people is able to be protected they will get vacation pay they will maybe docked they might they, but they will get paid administrative leave we'll never know what discipline happened to them we'll never know what happened the law acts like a hood it shields them the same way the hood shields the Klan. And so when we're talking about the cameras, the body cameras, if you are in a state like New York, where the police get access to the body camera footage before the victims do, if you are in a state like ours, where you may not have entitlement to any of that footage, unless you are able to demonstrate certain things within the law, you are essentially now just being surveilled, and the cameras can be used against you before you even get access to use them to defend yourself. So this approach to policing that presumes they are correct until that pres- it, and it, it is out of place with what we experience and it is out of place with the fact that the police are a modern day extension of slave patrols which are designed to monitor and keep black bodies under control. <laughs> Thank Thanks, you. Miss. <laughs> <laughs> it's 2019 going into 2020. This is not his first dance yeah. at this rodeo. Yeah. Uh, he ran in 2016. I made Hi. the same claim there. Yes, sir. Hi to you too. Uh, that you were tone deaf that you are out yeah. of touch, that especially as it relates to black people, you don't know what the hell you're talking about. And I don't care how many people you shield and surround yourself who are with who are willing to go hard and to paint for you. And I love some of the people that are advocating Indeed. for you. Indeed. However, you're not them. Yeah. I would vote for them in a heartbeat, not you, because you have b- failed to pivot. His first uh, run at this, talking about how poor black people are. Mm-hmm. No, 74% of black people are not in poverty. So you can't talk to us as if we're, that's our biggest problem. Right. And I'm not saying poverty is not a problem, but the vast majority of black people are not poor. Mm. I talk to them every day. The average salary at Sirius XM, the average salary is $126,000. Average. Hey, y'all. All right, Karen This is Rebels. our audience. That's right. It's a lot. That's right. Not the workers. Y'all go ahead with that. I'm talking about the people that <laughs> All this, the, the people... serious staff was like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> yes, yes. And that means that these are people that own businesses. These are people, and not everybody. And right. if you're not in that spectrum... It's aspirational as well. But what I'm saying is black people are not poor, downtrodden, dragging their knuckles around, begging for (laughs) white people to come save us. Mm. For the most part, we're more Greenwood and Rosewood than we're anything. Mm. We do it every day. We're more that than anything. So don't talk to me about how poor and you're going to do all these poor programs and make sure. Yeah, I want you to absolve people's student loan debt because student loan debt is bull crap. That's right. Period. Not because we need your savior, but that your education system is not worth the value of what we're paying out of our pocket. Right. Period. Full stop. It's a scheme. It's a money scam. <sighs> yeah. All I, right. I was thoroughly and utterly unimpressed. Right. Again. So, so now it's this. Now again. you don't even know how to solve the criminal justice problem that we have. And have you been listening? Like, no. do you Tone engage death. with Maybe people? He's there are scholars death death. who have, oh my, there are scholars who have like actual research on the solutions that should be employed that you would think would be a part of his broader framework and how he's engaging with this community. Are we hearing from those people? No, we're okay. not. And that tells me that he doesn't care. Julian Castro has a whole damn breakout on his website. I mean, he's got nuanced understanding of what's going on. 